Hey guys, Sebastian here with another uh, technical update. I actually made this video in Japanese also, so if you speak Japanese, feel free to check out uh, the link in the description for the Japanese version of this video. Uh, so let's get right into it. So this week we're talking about the V1 endpoint that has been coded up, and you can see the pull request for this over here. So actually there's a lot that has been uh, added. Uh, for example, we've got a new API to add a new wallet, so you'll be able to just uh, call this new wallet uh, API function at your new wallet setup. Uh, there's some uh, scripts now to run with a new wallet as opposed to the old one in case you're interested. And uh, here's, there's some more examples such like a function to dump the wallet state. So you can just take the current state of the wallet, save it to disk and see what happens. You'll be able to delete your secret keys if you so incline. And there's like some style changes and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a pretty exciting update. I think I think a lot of people have been asking for this feature. Uh, next one is the core backlog. Uh, so here there's actually a lot written up, so we'll kind of go through it one by one. So one of them is that they're talking about kind of some uh, discussion they've been having about the exception handling and whether or not it's okay. So uh, I've been talking about this a bit uh, last week where they have this documentation now. Uh, they've been writing a lot of guidelines actually recently, and that one of them is about uh, exception handling, uh, which is like a computer science term if you don't know. And they wrote up, you know, like how they should handle it within their code base and whatever. And some people have had a, a different opinions about what, how they should approach this problem. And so I've been having some internal discussions about like whether or not this is the best approach. Uh, the next thing is the HTTP-based uh, block sync uh, work, which is the safe. I mean, I, I think everybody here knows uh, HTTP is kind of like the backbone of the web, and they're trying to implement this HTTP protocol on top of uh, the Cardano sediment layer. So you can see they got like uh, two changes related to this, and hopefully this will make uh, block syncing uh, easier, faster. And uh, more flexible, you'll be able to build more protocols and various things on top of their settlement layer uh, with this new uh, uh, feature they're adding. Uh, next one, they're talking about uh, the next release. So uh, as you may have heard, there's going to be a new release of both the settlement layer and the wallet uh, coming out fairly soon. And so uh, they're talking about uh, doing uh, smoke testing. So smoke testing is actually this process of uh, build verification testing. So when they're releasing a new version, we want to check is everything okay, is everything right. So it's kind of like this as picture shows. There's like some spoke me eyes. You know, is it actually working? Does it, does it have all the features the user want? Uh, and uh, that's kind of the step they're at right now. And uh, next step, we're going to talk a bit about the wallet. So uh, they've had the log submission process they've been working on for a while. So I mentioned this in the previous video also, which is a feature I'm pretty excited for, which is this like. Uh, uh, ability to send bug reports from inside the wallet. So, uh, for example, if your wallet is syncing and so there's a problem, the syncing stops. You'll be able to like press this button to report an issue. You'll have to send a, a report directly to the uh, dev team about your issue and some logs that try uh, is what your issue is about to try and help them be able to solve this problem faster. So it's pretty exciting work, at least I think. And then there's some talk about the wallet backend. So I mentioned this before, that the wallet backend uh, actually is something that they've been talking about quite a bit. So they have a video about this at the start of the month where they talk about uh, their development technique and uh, the way they're approaching this wallet uh, backend change or their, their rewrite essentially. And they're talking about uh, this new spec that they've been writing up. So if you've been following the spec, I made a video about the spec. So if you're interested in this spec, you can go check out my video where I kind of read through this uh, new paper they're writing and I kind of go through and explain it. But they actually wrote a new section fairly recently called Rollback, where they explain how rollback will work within the wallet. For example, like if you start following a chain, and then it no longer is the longest chain, so you have to roll back and go to the next chain, and how this process will uh, be applied. So they've, they've been working on this, and they've also been working on some benchmarks uh, to try and measure performance in the wallet to make sure everything is fast when they create new features that it doesn't uh, cause any regression. Uh, they mentioned some other stuff also. Uh, such that uh, they're trying to generate synthetic blockchains uh, via quick check. Uh, so this is also mentioned in the video. We're trying to generate synthetic data for the wallet to be able to effectively uh, create a test suite. So if you don't, don't know what quick check is, uh, there's an article about it, like a Wikipedia article about it. It's uh, just a tool written in Haskell for uh, software testing, and uh, that's what they're using to try and uh, generate the synthetic data, which I think is pretty exciting. If you've seen the video, I think you'd be pretty excited about it also. And uh, they've also been talking about how progress has been slowed down due to ramp up time. So if you don't know what ramp up time is, I suggest you uh, read through uh, this book called The Mythical Man Month, which is a book about software engineer practices and how hard it is to expand a team. So IHK obviously has been hiring a lot recently to try and meet all the demand 
uh, that people, all the demands people have had. And whenever you hire a lot of people, it requires a lot of time to train those people and all that. And so this is a book about that topic. If you're interested, I, I give it, a, I give it a, a good recommendation. It's a very famous book within software engineering. Uh, next, they're talking about uh, yeah, new benchmarks. I mentioned that, and also they're talking about uh, mempool consistency uh, upgrades. So if you don't know what a mempool is, which uh, maybe you don't know, here's a mempool of a uh, Bitcoin. Let me just uh, yeah. So it shows like uh, the size of the mempool over time. And so what a mempool is essentially a once you send a transaction, uh, before the transaction is actually included in the blockchain, it needs to be keep, kept track of. So it says like a, here, there's like, a, for example, a thousand transactions that have been sent, but have not yet been included in any blocks. And so uh, the mempool is what keeps track of all these uh, yet to be inserted transactions. And uh, to make sure everything is going well, uh, they've been making some changes uh, to make sure everything is consistent. And the way they're doing that is using uh, STM, uh, which is here, it's a software transactional, model, uh, transactional memory, uh, which is using the same on Microsoft. But if the way it works, essentially, if you're not familiar with uh, transactional models, is to say, like, uh, whenever you do an operation, for example, it's a very common database, is when you write something, you either want to write it 100% or not at all. So you can imagine, like, if you start writing something and something goes wrong, and, like, you know, 65% of the way through writing your data, your computer shuts down, whatever, it can cause some data corruption, all these kinds of like weird problems. And to kind of avoid this, uh, they, they're using transactional models just to say if it goes 65% and then something goes wrong, it will do a rollback automatically and uh, it will return to as if you had not written any data at all. So uh, with this uh, feature, it'll make sure that either all the data is written properly or nothing was written at all. These are the only two options. So it solves a lot of these like a data inconsistency, half written data uh, errors. And so that's what they've been working on. Uh, other than that, they've been working on uh, yeah, networking stuff. And so they, they put more work, uh, details about the networking stuff uh, recently. So uh, they've implemented, as you can see right here, uh, faster block serialization and deserialization. So upload and, up and download. And they, they've got actually quite the write-up to where they talk about uh, you know the work they've done, why they think this is important. What else is interesting is they've got some benchmarks here also where they talk about uh, how it's faster, where it's faster, and they're trying to prove that you know this change they've made is actually improving, which I think is, is a pretty cool. So if you're interested in like a reading this discussion, where it's just actually a pretty long discussion, uh, you know you can always find all the links and everything for this video down in the uh, description section. So if you're interested in anything I've talked about, uh, just check the description, check out the link and uh, follow the conversation, which is in this case is quite a long conversation actually. Um, and yeah, so there's this other change uh, where they're trying to do a, a verified framework, uh, a verification framework, sorry. Where they're trying to make sure that the blocks are, uh, you know, all correct and trying to have a new framework for that from what I understand or an improvement to the current framework. And so actually, if you see here that this is still open, that has, it is not done yet, it hasn't been implemented yet. And the reason why is because they need to uh, finish this first do some additional stuff, and then uh, they can add in this feature, which is what they're talking about uh, over here. Uh, and then there's the DevOps section. The DevOps section they're talking about a uh, very uh, asked for feature, uh, which is the Linux installer. So they're talking about how the Linux installer is coming. They're working on their uh, technical some problems uh, with the best solution uh, to packages. If you don't know what NPM and Nix are, they're two different package managers. So this one is usually used for JavaScript, this one is usually used for Haskell, so you can look into them if you're interested. Uh, additionally, the team has been working on some uh, continuous integration, CI, some continuous integration uh, improvements. And actually, if you look at the day -day list, uh GitHub, which I believe I have open right here, uh, if you look at the recent pull requests, actually like uh, nearly all of them are about uh, these uh, continuous integration changes, uh, so they're actually putting a lot of work into this uh, recently, which is good. I mean, it's it's uh, really important to have this continuous integration. If you're not sure what that is, yeah, feel free to look it up. Uh, next is some like a miscellaneous work streams. Uh, they've been talking about hardware wallets, and uh, so they've got uh, some delays announced, which is unfortunate. Uh, which is talking about how in, in, they mentioned this previous week also, where uh, they're going to need to spend some additional time. Uh, working with consulting firms and the Ledger company and all of that to get the wallet implemented on the Ledger Nano. 
And they've also mentioned, which, which has not previously been uh, said, is that actually the first version of the Nano Wallet will not have uh, cold staking, which I believe is mentioned somewhere in here. Yeah, will not support delegation, uh, which is, uh, I think, pretty unfortunate. Cause a lot of people are hoping to just put their uh, coins onto their uh, hardware wallet and just leave it there. Uh, but if it doesn't support delegation, it's kind of a reason to not do that and trying to keep your coins on your uh, computer that can uh, use the Daedalus wallet that uh, that support this delegation, which is unfortunate. Uh, the next thing is talking about incentives. And I think that this like uh, section over here is, is also not too encouraging because they're talking about how uh, the incentive structure they're working on is uh, delayed a bit. And the reason why is because uh, the researchers who have been working on this uh, need a bit more time. But actually, not that much more time. They said, uh, I think by the end of the of the month and, or beginning of March, uh, they should be done uh, doing the first uh, 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 part of their research. At which point, they'll do some discussion about it, some internal discussion, and after that, they'll uh, you know write some simulations, do the simulations of their model to make sure that. The incentive models they've created for the staking is actually correct, has the right incentives and all this stuff. And then once all that is done, then they will start the implementation integration into Cardano. So I think staking uh, will not be coming like next week. It, you know, it's at least going to take until like a late March, if not more. And so it's unfortunate, but you know, I'd rather they take their time and have these scientists really work everything out, do simulations and all that before they just like uh, throw this out there. Uh, next is the smart contract language. Uh, where they're talking about how uh, they've been looking for six people and they still haven't found like the six people. They've got uh, two new people that they mentioned, two new candidates uh, referred through in, uh, selection. They've been trying to recruit by uh, sending messages out saying that we're, we're looking for uh, uh, six uh, members uh, to join this. I believe there's six uh, members to join this like a uh, new language uh, group where they're trying to design languages for writing these smart contracts. And so if they haven't recruited all the people they need yet, then it is, is another way of saying, like, uh, you know, they're still working on this, and there's still a lot of work to be done, and we don't even have the people to do all the work that needs to be done yet. So I have to say, like, the smart contract thing is actually still a fair ways away. The site chain's research is uh, still going on. So they're talking about how they're uh, wrapping up some of the papers and trying to look for uh, submissions and conferences, which is some pretty good news. I think it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, all the papers they write, uh, and then which conferences get accepted in, and how well all this like uh, peer review stuff goes. And that's it for this uh, uh, review. Hopefully you found this interesting. As always, you can find all the links of the uh, content I talked to in the description. You can find me on Twitter, uh, which is also linked in the description. You can find my ADA donation address in the description. If you want to see more of these videos, feel free to subscribe, and uh, keep in touch with me, and I'll be sure to give you guys more updates. Uh, as uh, you know, more news gets released. Thank you.